in this video i'm going to be looking at design of reinforced concrete column using the column chart do you know that we have about two other methods that are being used to design column we'll talk briefly about two of them and then we now look more in depth into the use of column charts to design reinforced concrete column Reinforced concrete column, according to either the BS code or the Euro code, is usually designed using the column chart. The column chart is the relationship between the moment and the axial load. This is done especially for columns that have a significant amount of axial load as well as bending moment. But for column that is subjected mainly to purely axial load, then design formulas is actually used for that. So we have about three methods of designing a first concrete column according to the European code. The first of the design method is using the design equations. The design equation is derived from the analysis of the stress block diagram. We all know this stress block diagram where you want to derive the design formula for beam, slab, the same thing can also be done for column. Then we now have constructing moment axial load interaction diagrams. So these moment axial load interaction diagrams are the design chart that we are used for columns. This is actually derived from the design equation from the first uh, method. But because we want to be using something much more easier and avoid a lot of computation. So that is why the design chart was constructed design chart can also be used for design of beam but that is not usually common then we have the last part which is the approximate method so the design chart is usually used for columns having a rectangular or circular cross section so when the column is having other shapes then it is the design chart is not recommended because the way the design chart was constructed if you look at the formula derivation you see that the section used the cross section used as an example was the rectangular section so when you have other shapes is either you use the design equation or you construct a moment axial load interaction diagram for that shape that is when you can now make use of whatever design chart you derive from the interactions the column chart is also used when there is symmetrical arrangement of reinforcement. We all know that generally columns are designed and detailed in such a way that the reinforcement are symmetrically arranged. In the next slide, I'm going to explain what we mean by symmetrical arrangement of reinforcement. So when there is need for you to design a column in such a way that the Reinforcement of the column are going to be arranged unsymmetrically. Then the best method to use is using the design equations or by approximate method. Or when the cross section of the column you want to design is non-rectangular. So this is an example of the stress block diagram. This is showing the strain and the stress diagram. The figure here is showing a symmetrically arranged reinforced concrete column section. So this is symmetrically arranged. We have the same number of reinforcements at the bottom side as also the same number of reinforcements at the top side. So that means this column here is symmetrically arranged. The next one by the right hand side is showing a column section of an unsymmetrically arranged column. You can see that we have three number of reinforcement at the top side and we also have two number of reinforcement at the bottom side. The column are detailed in such a way that we have equal number of reinforcement in both in edges of the column. So in that way, it makes the column symmetrically arranged. So most of the design chart that are given in bs 8110 part 3 are used for columns that are symmetrically arranged so when you need to design a column that is unsymmetrically arranged you have to refer to using the design equation or using the approximate method column design charts can be used for either the design of a short column 
or slender column we all know the definition of short and slender column you can check out my video on short and slender column to find out more about this so according to the bs code we have braced and unbraced column when the column is braced and the effective length of the column divided by the size of the column is less than 15 then that kind of column is said to be short and when the column is unbraced the effective length divided by the size of the color is less than 10 that you can say the column is said to be to be short as well but when it is greater than 10 or 15 for braced and unbraced column then this column is said to be slender this is the definition from bs8110 so a typical design chart can be gotten from bs8110 part 3 i'm going to leave the link to download this code in the description of this video you can check out the description of this video you see the link to download bs 8110 part 3 bs 8110 part 3 is the code that discuss the design chart so it is it contains not just design chart for columns it also contains design chart for beams singly reinforced beam and doubly reinforced beam check out the description i will leave the link to download it there so this is a typical rectangular section column chart table you can use this as well to also design a circular column as i said earlier so what do you have to look out for in the column chart the first thing you need to look out for are the design parameters so the three design parameters needed is the fcu the fcu is the characteristic strength of concrete so for each fcu there is a particular table for it so you can see that for this table we have fcu of 25 fy of 4 460 and d over h of 0.75 d is referred to as the effective depth of the column then h is the height of the column height means the longer side you know column half if it is a rectangular section you have the width the b and the h so the h is the longer side of the column so you have to find the ratio of the effective depth to the height so those are the three parameters you need in order to for you to be able to select the table to use so then the next thing if you now look at the table you can see that the table is divided into we have the x and y along the vertical the vertical represents n over bh n over bh is axial load divided by the area cross sectional area of the column then you also have the set the horizontal side which is the moment so the moment divided by b is square so if you look at this uh within the chart you see that there are curves these curves represent the percentage of reinforcement so whatever you plot against the n over bh and m over b a square the intersection of this plot we give you the percentage of reinforcement to be used we all know that according to the bs code the minimum percentage of reinforcement is 0.4 percent so that's why you see that the minimum curve along the chart is 0.4 for any of the curve the minimum curve is 0.4 so when you plot the where you plot your n over bh against m over b a square and you get a location that is before the 0 0.4 that is is within this region this region that uh this region that my cursor is trying to highlight so if it falls within this region that is it does not got it does not reach 0 0.4 percentage curve that means the the meaning of that is that your column is requiring a reinforcement that is less than the minimum so that means you need to provide the minimum area of percentage and the minimum percentage is 0 0.4 let me say that again when you plot your n over bh against m over bh square and the intersection of this plot falls within this region before the curve 0 0.4 that means that your column require a lesser reinforcement than the minimum but in design we know we cannot provide not something less than the minimum required reinforcement and the minimum percentage for a column is 0 0.4 so that means when the 
intersection of both the x and y meets before the 0.4 curve so that means you use 0.4 percentage so the same thing applies when it exceed this the eight percent so you you can see the curves the curves is about nine in numbers you have the 0 0.4 curve you have the one curve two three four five six seven eight according to the bs code when your column is constructed vertically so you can have the minimum the maximum percentage for maximum construction of reinforcement is six percent but when your column is constructed horizontally the maximum allowable percentage of reinforcement is eight percent so so when it exceeds the eight percent curve so that means your column section is requiring more reinforcement than the concrete section can take so what you have to do in that case is you have to redesign we are going to look at work example so that you can understand this quite well then if you also look at the chart you see some dashed line that are trying to represent what we call k you can see k equals 0.1 you have another dashed line for k equals 0.2 you have another dashed line for k equals 0.3 up to the last dashed line k equals 1 this one is actually used for design of slender column we are not going to cover that in this video you can check out my next video on design of slender column using the column chart so understanding what we needed in the column chart so let us let us look at a work example for us to understand it so we have a column detail column size of 230 by 300 the exit load on the column is 90, 900 kN. The bending moment on the column is 50 kN meters. Then let's take our FCU to be 30, our FY to be 410. So having this, from here we can now bring out some parameters. For example, the B of the column is going to be 230. The H of the column is going to be 300. So from here, we can now determine the effective depth of column the effective depth of the column if you look at that diagram you can see that what they use for calculation is the h so that means you have 300 minus cover minus links minus diameter of bar divided by 2 so if you compute that using a cover of 40 for your column practically we use 40 mm for concrete cover then the links you can use a 10 mm bar for your links then the bar size you can assume a 16 mm bar size for design purpose so if you substitute 40 for column 10 for links and 16 mm for the bar size you are going to end up with 242 millimeters the next thing is to evaluate d over h d over h equals 242 divided by 300 so you are going to have 0 0.81 something approximate that to 0 0.1 0 0.8 then from here you can now determine n over bh that is you want to know evaluate the vertical parameter in the column chart the vertical parameter is n over bh your n is in kilonewton and if you look at the chart you can see that the value for the vertical parameter is in newton per millimeter square so you need to convert kilonewton to newton so that's why you multiply by 1000 then you divide by b and h b is 230 is already in millimeters so at the end of the day you are going to have 13 newton per meter square so this is the value for the vertical axis of the column chart the next thing you have to evaluate is m over b a square m is given as 50 kN per meter kN meter you have to convert this to newton millimeters so that means you have to multiply by 10 to power of 6 then you divide by b 230 then by h square which is 30 square evaluating this you have 2.4 newton per millimeter square so now we have all the parameters needed for you to select a column chart so that means you are going to look for a column chart that has fcu of 30 
FY of 460 and D over H of 0 0.8. And this is exactly what this column chart is about. You can see the FCU is 30 here. Yeah? FY is 460. D over H is 0 0.8. This is what we need. So you now have to find on the vertical axis, you need to look for 13. So this is 10. This is 15. So that means this is going to be 11. This is 12. This is 13. So that is, you now draw a, a, a an horizontal line to that 14. Then on the horizontal axis, you look for 2.4. This is 2. This is 3. So we have about 4 inner divisions. So that means this is 2.2, .2, this is 2.4, 2.6, 2.8, 3. So that means you draw a vertical line on point 2.4. So we now look at the intersection of these two lines. So you can see that it exceeds 0.4 percentage. It exceeds the curve 1 percentage. It's between the percentage of curve 1 and curve 2. So this is curve 2. It does not reach that end so if you look at if you read this just from this one this is two is is much more closer to two than one and it's more than halfway so it's like 1.8 i hope you understand so from this now we can say that from the chart whatever we get from the chart is equals to 100 as over b H. That is what you see here. That is what you can see here. Whatever is read here is equals to 100 AS over B. So let's represent that as K. So our K is equals to 1.8 from this reading. So then we can just say that we can make area of reinforcement. This is what we want to design. This we are designing for the longitudinal reinforcement, which is the area of reinforcement in this formula, making ASC the form the subject of formula you have k multiplied by bh divided by 100 substituting the value of k b and h so you are going to have 1.8 230 300 divided by 100 so at the end of the day the area of required reinforcement is 1242 millimeter square so what you have to do is you have to provide the reinforcement area that is a little bit higher than this and also you also have to take note of what we call the minimum spacing of reinforcement the size of your column is 230 by 300 along the 230 side you can't have more than three arrangement of reinforcement along the 300 size you can have 16 mm four numbers but if it is 20 mm bar you want to use you can't have more than three. So if that is the case, you can also check out my video on column details. I'm going to create another video on column details. So for you to be able to get that video, you can subscribe to this channel so that when I make the video, you get notified, subscribe to it and turn on the notification. So after going through everything so i think it's best we provide 6020 which has an area of 1885 millimeter square so this is the design of the rc column at the end of the day we end up with a reinforcement of six number of 20 mm reinforcement so how are you not going to detail this reinforcement so the detailing will go this way the bar size is 20 mm the number is six we want to arrange it in a 230 by 300 column so this is how the arrangement is going to be along the 230 side we have two of it along the 300 side we have three of it so at the end of the day this is the detailing of the column if you find this video helpful and you've learned one or two things kindly the subscribe button turn on the notification and you should make sure you turn on the notification so that when i make more video on this topic you can get notified and get to watch the video and be the first to watch the video thank you see you in the next one